so uh, uh, apparently. <laughs> I'm sitting here dancing uh, like a dancing? dork. And we're just live. I forgot to completely hit the intro, so we're just we're just live. Hi, here. how you guys doing? That's what I do when I'm waiting to go live. I just bounce around like a complete <laughs> dork. And now you know that. So thank you, sweetie, <laughs> for that fabulous moment <laughs> in my YouTube experience. <laughs> Welcome to live, boys and girls. All right, well, if you just came here because live recommended it, <laughs> we teach art and usually do that pretty slick, but today is clearly not the day. Nope, not today. Not today. How you guys doing? Well, there there was... There was there, there, How boy, long were we live where I was just sitting there bouncing? Just a couple seconds. Just, just the music playing. So what happened was, you know, I hit the start music and you're just kind of dancing. And I looked up there and what it was is I saw your face dancing oh. on the wrong screen. And I was like, wait a minute, there should be a giant pink screen filled there. And it was not filled with pink. Today I'm going to show you how to paint as part of Southwest Art Week, Cathedral Rock in Sedona, Arizona. This was one of the paintings you guys voted on. And one of the things that you were talking about, that you were two things that you really wanted to learn over Southwest Week is how to blend some stuff out for the background and also how to do some water reflections. In fact... You were so emphatic on the water reflection request that we're probably going to do some more water reflection pieces until we're all awesome at it. Awesome. Completely awesome at water reflections. Hmm. Hmm. This is fantastic. Woo! Other, okay. other than me so, being behind on button pushing and me going, all right, everything's okay. So there is a traceable, and that's up on the website, theartsherpa.com. There is a reference. Um, and of course, that's also in, did I put that in the Art Shipper group? That's going to be in the, I don't know what I did today. <laughs> it's that kind of thing. It's going to be there, though. It is. It's going to be there. A lot of talk about the palette today. The palette? Yes, my paint palette, the colors. And oh. what I'll say is, this is very different in color than what I normally do. So it was a really interesting journey for me. Even though we had some familiar favorites for my color palette, we were bringing in some other colors, and I even have a backup emergency yellow just in case it all gets weird on me. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I'm going to get my number 30 bright out. My big, beautiful number 30 bright. <laughs> you can use any nice, wide, synthetic brush you have. What you want is a nice, clean, crisp, synthetic filament with a good spring to it. Now, this is interesting. I'm doing something a little different here. If you only have white paint, use white paint. But if you happen to have some white gesso around, ah, it's very cool for this. So I'm going to get my brush wet, and we're going to do a ground on this today. A ground. Mm. How now, brown ground? And I'm going to pull my phthalo blue out on the edge of my bristles. See what I'm doing? Yep. Two, 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 and I'm loading. See, by pulling it out and then cross back, I pull it out, and I cross. I'm, I'm explaining this because a lot of times you guys are like, how come your brush goes so much further? And it has occurred to me we that need, it may be the load. We may need to slide that over. If you look up at your reference camera there. Just okay. To, oh, there it goes. So it pulls out, and I cross down, and that is how I put a whole bunch of paint just in the tip of my brush. In the tip of my brush. And I'm going to go back and forth with this pure... Thalo blue, green shade. You can see I was doing that yesterday, too. <laughs> this is when I practiced a little bit before I did because, woo, some of the mixtures were so unusual. So now, unusual. Now, you said... Uh, that, that I'm going to load a little more water and paint. Hmm? I said what? You, you've only pulled out two colors, but there's a lot more in the description. There's a lot more in the description. Right now we're doing the ground, and I don't have room to have all the palettes out in display. That's all that's happened. I will put the full palette out. So, see, this is a nice smooth, 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 back and forth. Interesting thing I'm going to do here, I'm going to flip it over. And the reason I'm going to flip this over is that we have a reflection, don't we? You do. We do. So, we have to do some mirroring on this canvas. Reflections are about blending, soft edges, and mirroring. So now that I have my dark blues on my outer edges, man, right? And that's what you want. You want to just get your dark blue to your outer edges, back and forth. Nice, smooth strokes. I'm going to just load the white onto my brush. And look at this. Ah, ha, 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 that's how I do it. It's my trick. Yeah. This is my trick. I show you my tricky trick. 
I used to hide my tricky trick, but now I show my tricky trick. <laughs> so see, I'm working while it's all still wet. Amber, Amber says she has six jars of water for rinsing today. Woohoo! Amber is ready! <laughs> Amber came to paint today. Don't be messing with Amber. Definitely for rinsing. She's rinse prepared. Do you see how I'm blending these two spaces? So even though this is an acrylic ground, I am setting the foundation for awesomeness. And one of the things that happened to me is I lost a little of my blend there, but it's okay because I have to come back with other stuff. I got a really good one up here. This one dried on me. What I can do is put out a little more phthalo blue, hmm. like you do. And this ground, I just like to get it as nice as I can because it's going to save me work the later times. In the later time. <laughs> That's a early Mad Max reference. <laughs> I just did. So see, we're just trying to get this blend. Oh, yeah. just sh 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 and here where it, it griefed me, guess what I'm going to do? Flip it. I'm going to flip it. I'm going to rinse my brush out. I'm going to rinse my brush out. And come back with some more phthalo blue and blend it again. Look at that. More blending. I just can't be stopped. You can't stop me. You can't stop the blending. Back and forth. See how I'm, I'm being really abusive with my canvas too. I'm like, Arr! It seems just to be fine. It, it does take it. My canvas takes it. So I'm just making sure I have some nice lines. And once I have this here, and I stop leaving fingerprints, <laughs> I'm going to rinse my big, beautiful baby out. My Megalodon. And I'm going to get the water out of it and put it aside. And I'm going to say hi to everybody. And my canvas needs to dry because I'm going to sort of chalk in my background. Now, at this stage, you could use your transfer paper and transfer on your traceable. Well, it's a good time for you to do this. I'm not going to turn the bubbles on because we've learned what happens when we turn bubbles on with wet backgrounds. Wet backgrounds don't love bubbles. They don't love bubbles. We are at 300. We've been so it's it's a good time for you to to say thank you for everyone coming and visit us today because it's a really I mean this is going to be a fun painting. It's going to be a little we're going to take be here for a little while to get all the reflections in and the, the mesas and the bits and the, but this is going to be interesting. I'm I, I've seen I see you it spinning like it's threatening me with bubbles, but it, it isn't dispersing it, them. It isn't. I turned it off before. So it's uh, it's there, ready to go. The bubbles are ready the for painting later. today. This is happening. Yeah. Do you so, mind if I let you hang with them a second yes. while I dry the painting? I know you've got to dry the painting. So Look at fine. my hands. I touch my canvas. <laughs> so while she's drying that, oh, let me turn that down. So while she's drying that, I want to say thanks, guys, for coming and hanging out with us today. Uh, as you know, if you are at, if you're if you're at home, we would definitely want to see your paintings. There's been a lot of really great, a lot of really really great paintings come from Southwest Week this week. Um, I we, last night we were out just looking at all the different the flowers and the cowboys. Uh, it, it was just really had a had a had a really good time looking at all those. And, and thank you guys for sharing those up. Again, you can find a link to. Uh, any of our traceables and the materials and the, all that's in the description down below as well as uh, links to our website where you can find this and all uh, all sorts of other information out there. Um, we have of course our chat going on there uh, but the big thing is is that we you, we have pages there that list up each of the projects that we do and have access to the traceables and the reference images and we try to make that as easy as possible for you over there. The traceables! You just tape that down and there's one of those traceables right now. Transfer it on. It's very important. Right? So like all you do to do that on this kind, white kids chalk. See? White kids chalk. Boop boop a doop. Now Flip it over. And technically, you only have to get it over the over the lines that you're going to be drawing. But yeah, it's just but easy to I, just I, you know, so you can be a very neat person and be like, I'm going to color all these lines very tidily. Or you can be like the sherpa and be like, I need to be done with this project really quickly. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever your style is, no judgy. 
no judgy to Tracy. And then you just take this, and the trick is to affix it a couple of places. But otherwise, it does that, and that's bad. No. Otherwise, if, if you don't tape it down a couple of places, it shifts on you, and your lines shift, and it it looks like, you know. Then everything gets a little wonkity. It looks like you're you're a little wonkity. <laughs> that's what it looks like. So I like to tape it down up top. And then make sure that it's nice and taped down on the bottom. So I'll probably do two pieces of tape. Because I'm like that. And the reason I am doing this today instead of freehanding is so we have a very similar little background experience. And I'm just working this out. I'm stretching my tracing paper which means I'm pulling it tight. See that? I pulled yeah. my tracing paper tight. And apparently I'm just wiping blue paint all over my hands. That's my other thing I'm doing today. <laughs> now I'm going to just get a few of my lines because I don't really want every line here for myself personally. But I do want my cathedral lines. No. Karen was asking. Hi, Karen. She says, "What kind of tape do you use?" The stuff I use artist tape. Okay, because she says the stuff that she saw at the local store was like sixteen bucks a roll. Okay, that is crazy. I don't pay sixteen dollars a roll on my tape, but artist tape can be expensive. I'll tell you a little trick. If you take masking tape, the the beige kind, the kind's band aid color, and you tap it to your jeans. Like ten times, it turns into artist tape. <laughs> okay, what she means by tap it down your jeans, not on the roll, not like so, that. you have to, yeah. So say you've got denim, right? You and you have shirt. masking tape. Yeah, yeah. Just do that a couple times. It picks up a little bit of the the, the, the lint and turns your masking tape into a passable artist tape. Sometimes you have to do that when you're out, like on location, and you forgot your artist tape. No, that's to say, if you're doing a commission where you have spent hours and hours and hours and hours working on layers that you don't want to mess up, that $16 roll of tape may have value. Dude, there's some of them that do that little, there's one that does curves, that's fine well, see, lines and curves. That thing is worth its weight in whatever uh, metal, unobtainium, it's worth its weight in unobtainium. Yeah. I'm just kind of grabbing these trees that I know are here. And, and just some basic lines that I know I'm going to have to uh, contend with. You're just using the regular painter's kind of tape, which is like four or five bucks a roll. Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, they make all kinds of, you know, 3M Company makes a whole bunch of products. What you want is a tape that doesn't pull your paint up, mm -hmm. right, and doesn't let the paint really leak underneath. And what do you think about that blue painter's tape stuff? Um, I haven't had luck with it, but I've had people very emphatically inform me that they have. So what I would say is test it if you're, you know, working an important piece. Right. So you're not trashing the piece that you're in love with. And that's a, that's a good point. Is, I mean, something that may be okay in your studies and in your everyday practice may not be what you want to use on a final commission work. Yes. Or, or, or a piece that you're going to hang in a gallery. Or, or how about just... Show. Something you spent 40 hours on. Yeah. You know, man, artwork can have incredible value, not end up in a gallery or be in commission or have anything to do with resources or money. It could just be it marks a meaningful time in your life that you're trying to record. It could be that, you know. What kills me is that I remember in, in I had friends, and one of them back in high school, his name was Colin, so everybody called him Boo, and he was an amazing artist. He would just, I mean, like, he could do stuff with Prismacolors that just blew blew my mind. And he always did it on, like, lined paper or, or print paper. Honey does this, too. Because he just, you know, it was it was just because he didn't have any access to it and didn't know. Honey has access, and she I know. still puts She's on still, the little I, torn pieces of paper, and I can't get her to stop. <laughs> because you know what? Your child will have to rebel against you in whatever way they can. And apparently mine is like, I refuse to use good media. You know, it's a, it's one of those things you should you should take pride in your artwork. No, that's not to say that you know you have to buy the best materials every time you paint something, but when you're going to put time and effort into it, you I know. think that's one of the hardest transitions that amateur artists have to becoming professional artists is they don't know when their talent has outstripped their materials. Yeah. Okay. So now I have my upper cathedral. I have my reflection blocked in. I've got my planes of color that I know I've got blocked in. 
And remember, you can clean up your chalk lines super easy with just a damp brush. Yeah. Right? So don't feel like, you know, you're not great. You're not golden. Now I'm going to, actually, I've got this brush out, so I'm going to just take this for a second and get it wet. This is my number eight cat's tongue, and I'm going to pull out some of my phthalo blue, and I'm going to, phthalo blue is slightly transparent. Yeah. A lot of landscape painters detest it the way some people detest black in landscape painting. It's one of those colors that pulls a lot of strong opinions. I grew up with it, so I have a passion for it. Yeah. My mom always used it. Because she's, you know, she can tone a color. So no. she's like, I can knock it back if I need to. So it's fine. And it's a really good, pure, almost primary blue sometimes. And for a lot of people's palettes, it's one of their primaries. I'm just glazing and darkening the top. See how my canvas is showing through underneath? So I'm not taking away the ombre that I created in the sky. I'm just deepening the top of the sky. I'm going to flip this over because I have a mirror, don't I? You have to ombre it. And make there. sure that my water is super deep as well. Now, this can be much darker than the top, by the way. Everything in the water is going to be a little darker and a smidge color shifted. Now, a smidge. Were you using a general charcoal pencil earlier? I was, was using when I, when I rechalked it in. Yeah. This is my General's White Charcoal okay. Pencil. And if you guys have painted with me for a while, you know I love these things. Uh, I've never spoken to anybody at the General's. It's not like my brushes where it like says the Art Sherpa. We you just, know, where you know there's a relationship there. We bought them at the local store. <gasps> we bought them. Yeah. I just get these at the local store. I have access to them. When I'm traveling, I can always find them. And I find this is my soap company. I find this company to be a really reliable company. The Humble General's Pencil Company. Um, they just do a good product that you can find. And sometimes that has value, doesn't it? Yep. So I've just deepened this a little bit because I know I'm going to want it to be darker than my top. And I can even go so far as to take another little bit of blue to the edge here. But it's really where you're at. All right? Mm. So I'm going to rinse this out of my brush. <laughs> Happy, happy, joy, joy. So I've got this blocked in. You're going to see me throughout this lesson as we do the reflection, flip my canvas a lot hmm. when it's necessary, right? So I'll be getting a bunch of this up in more detail up here with stronger, hard edges. But down here, everything's going to be soft and pulled down. Um, there is some effort to reflections, but I would say to, to you, your big challenge really is the mind flip. It's a bit of a mind flip. Sorry. <sighs> I'm a problem. No. <laughs> Let's talk about our paint palette today. Luckily, it's your show. This is, an, this is a 9 by 12 canvas because I wanted us to be able to get through the whole process of the landscape today. Over here, I have these colors. Mm. I have phthalo blue. I have dog's name purple. I have phthalo green, cad yellow, yellow ochre, Indian yellow. Cad orange, cadmium orange, cad red light, burnt umber, burnt sienna, titanium white, and zinc white. Those are, those are lots of colors. In a panic, we'll see at the yellow trees, I have this in reserve. This is the Naple Gate yellow. <laughs> Naple Gate yellow. Its pigment number is PY53. Golden calls it nickel titanium yellow. Matisse calls it also Naples yellow, but it's PY53. If you have Indian yellow from Golden or Liquitex, you have historically correct yellow, and it's fantastic. You should have that in your palette. It's an amazing color. Yes. Okay? Don't panic on your yellow. Your lemons are good. <laughs> the lemons are safe. All right, so I'm going to take some of my zinc, and I'm going to load it on my number eight cloud. Okay, so if you have a deer foot stippler, use that. If you have a scruffy cloud brush, just grab your favorite clouding brush. This is my favorite clouding brush. It's so good I put my name on it. <laughs> now, just, Dorothy was asking, this was the one that you had polled for on the website? We polled for this. I probably would have chickened out of this painting. You poll for everything. I, I, you know what? It's their class. 
You're like, you put up a poll. Should I chicken out on today's class? <laughs> yes? No. Everyone I almost put no. up that poll. <laughs> John knows I did. <laughs> so see how I'm just dry brushing a very loose, transparent cloud? Right? Yep. I'm using my zinc, and I'm just doing this nice, transparent cloud. And I'm going to, I'm just, the stroke is back and forth, right? Back and forth. And just sometimes I push up to push a little airy bits up. And this is my distant, weird little bits of cloud. I'm loading up, right? Let's come up here and put some of these. I think these are called horsetails, aren't they? I, I don't know. I am not. This is a cloud you see in the desert, though. So it's one you got to get down. I'm not a meteorologist. This makes it very easy to get the wispy part of it. There's another really crazy hard way of getting the wispy part of it that involves a drip in your finger and praying. Hmm. I don't teach that one live. I might in a cloud, like 17 ways to do clouds just to show y'all. This The many ways that artists get clouds, saran wrap, clouds. So I'm trying to just create this very random, distant, wispy feeling. The zinc is super transparent, and so it's letting me really see through it. If you don't have any zinc white or mixing white, you could get a glaze, like my glazing liquid, and try to do this with your um, titanium white, but you'd have to thin it a lot. Let's take these clouds behind our cathedral. This is in Sedona, Arizona. This is Cathedral Rock. So this is a very famous location. And surprisingly enough, not that many paintings until today done of it. <laughs> today, suddenly, there's going to be a lot more Cathedral Rock paintings. There's some. It's out there. You can see those on Fine Art America, but I'm just saying. Today, it Wait, all changes. Today, we bring it. Today, we bring it. Do you see how I'm being very wispy with these? If you had to, I mean, you could be just like, you know, use your finger. Don't just use tools. I like my brush better, but use tools that you have, right? Yeah. And there's a bit up here. It's just a light little, little, oh, I'm so happy. Little, so you go up, 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 wiggle back, down, forward, swoop. Right? When I have that, I'm going to switch over to my titanium white, and I'm going to load up. Now, you roll around on the foot of the brush there a lot. I do. So I'm doing my, my painting with this part of my brush. So I've just grabbed the titanium white for some of this. Yeah. Right? And then that helps it pop. People will be like, how did you get those clouds? These are really hard for people to get. But they're not actually hard to get. They're just hard to know how to get. So Janet says that Cathedral Rock is the most photographed monument in Arizona. Well, I don't blame them. It's really cool looking. Now let's make it the most painted with monument all today in Arizona. With all the Sherpettes' help, we got to have their help. We got to post them up on post social it up, media. Be, like have the tourist board of Arizona be confused today. They'd be like, "Wait, what?" So see how we're not putting a lot of pure titanium everywhere. We're just doing enough. Let's back up and see. See how we're getting this sort of wispy, far away cloud. Whoa. Oh, honey, you put up the old reference, the brown one, not the red one that I keep resending to you. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. So I will. <laughs> That's the wrong reference. Yeah. This is the correct color. Oh, okay. Well, let me see if I find that one. <laughs> I don't know where that brown one came from. Well, get it right. Hold on. But it keeps popping up in our back and forth. I'm going to put this right here for That's a right. second. It won't take, but it's okay. You can keep going. Because, uh, well, you can talk to them too. Because I'm just going to go over here to the. You can see actually that I nailed the color. See? 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 see. <laughs> Let's so, see if I find um, that. Yeah, I look at a bunch of references, and sometimes that gets to be kind of a chaotic thing. And then I picked this. I liked what this photographer did. So I licensed this image for this show. Is what I did. I don't. I. I I'm While you're it. here, right? While you're there. While you're here, you're gonna flip your canvas over. Okay. And I'm gonna do this over here for you. I'm gonna show you a little trick about reflections. 
I'm going to flip my reference over. See how I flipped it over? Yeah. I'm not going to try to understand things upside down. My brain's already dyslexic. That's not going to be fun. What I'm going to do is while this is here, look at this. I ignore this now, and now I'm just looking at my reflection. Hmm. Back into my zinc. Right? And I'm just going to very, very lightly paint what I see here on this side. So it's narrow here and widens out a bit here. I'm just going to make sure that I just loosely talk about that again. So the reflections are similar but different down here because of angles and the light path. But by paying attention to this and just and I want this to be very soft. You see how soft this is? Yeah. I am not getting crazy. This is such a dusting. Zinky zinc zinc. There's a little moisture on my zinky zinc zinc. Just right across here with this little reflection. And it's going to be such a big deal in the water later. You might not know to flip your canvas like that. There's stuff that sometimes we think people know when we're teaching, and it's like, oh, heck, i got to flip my reference over and flip my canvas over. I paint. It's like painting two different paintings. See how light, light, light? Yeah. Sorry about the reference, babe. Well, it's okay. I'm seeing what I can do here because I don't think I, that... You know, it dar I sent it to you again in Skype. Does that help? It does sort of. Okay. <laughs> I've just created a bunch of work for him. So there's just a couple spots where this is a little stronger. So you just lightly come here. See how it's light? But I'm layering up. And look, I'm making it very blendy and smooth. And it's okay on occasion to go like this. See how we're like that, where you pull down? And that will help also enforce the reflected nature of it. See? Pull, 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 push, push, push. Pull, pull. Pull, 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 pull. A little more. See? Pulling across. And this brush just does this work for me. I know that that is a thing, but just get your favorite one. I'm not sure if I got the right one here, but I've got a slightly lighter. Let me see. Let's see here. We pull it up here. Do, do, do. Do, do, do. There. Yeah, that's at least closer. That's at least orange. Because everything we're about to do be all orange. Yeah. <laughs> and the other one was all brown. Yeah, I think what it was is the, uh, there was one, when one of the video, when one of them got passed through an, uh, like, converted from a ping to a gif or it a gif. It just darkened. Yeah, it crushed all the colors. That's so. okay. So that's a thing you guys might not know. You pull down a reference, it could crush your colors. Yeah, well, when you save it out as different formats, it can change the colors that it saves it out. Okay, things that mess with you when you're an artist. Man, so all right. many. I know I'm spending a lot of time thinking about these reflections, but that's what you guys said pay attention to. So see how I'll pull down and then sometimes go across. So hopefully what that gives me, and then if I need to work that here, I will, right? The other way. What that's going to give me is a nice mirror to what's in my sky, but see softly reflected in the water. Flipping it over. Probably just need to put tape on both sides so it tweedledees and tweedledums easier. Yeah. Do, do, I have this tape. Look at me, all ready for this, all ready for my jam, jam, jam. So dark colors, we've got a dark color here and through here and on those back reflections of our rocks. Of course, what did I do? I printed out a black and white. So I don't get so confused by the color, I can't see my forest for my trees, which are a really weird color and took me forever to get. <laughs> Misting my paint. So I'm going to get my number four Cambridge. It's a, it's a bristle brush. It's scruffly. It's scruffly. And I'm going to darken 
this shadow in here, I'm going to darken a little bit here. I'm going to start putting in my shadow bits. My shadow bits. And my shadow is really interesting. It's a little bit of my cad red and my dog's purple, and you can add a smidge of phthalo blue to it to darken it. See that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, You're I, not I, using a black in this painting. There's just not the oranges in this reference photo. I can totally see it here. I'm going to do what I can over here to, to see what yeah, I can. Yeah, it's I, just, you know, the, the transferring is a pain. So yes. I'm going to pull down, pulling down right here on this rock. Let's pull down another little bit here. Let's pull down some shadow. We can come back. We're going to just put some of this in. We can come back with highlights and our palette knife in a minute, but we got to get these deep values in. Just pull it all in. Right here. Let's pull up. We'll come back and we'll use it again our palette knife. Get our rocky rocks. That's what Dora says. <laughs> so just get this in, okay? You know, you've got a shadow here. Some of it comes right up there. Across the top of the trees and down. Definitely here in your valley, right? How deep is your valley? Deep enough to cast a shadow. That's how deep it is. <laughs> So what are you mixing? What paints color you go over the colors you're mixing there with again? Okay, so cad red light, a little phthalo blue, and a little diox purple. Okay. Right. If you want to see what that is, with the see. Yeah. So what's an interesting thing? If I needed to make a slightly midtone shadow, then I can add a little white to it. Okay. I can lighten up my shadow. I'm gonna curve a little bit right here. This all can absolutely be in dark shadow. So I'm bringing a little shadow over to the right. I'm filling this in. What am I doing? I'm looking for my deepest values here. It's got this nice warm red tone to it. So my two choices here artistically when I'm painting the deserts, I could have done this or a very cool, weirdly light blue shadow to play against the orange creating contrast. And the reason that this piece is even appealing, I'm going to paint this all in because I'll come back with my palette knife. All right, to create some highlights, some rocky rocks, rocky. some feeling of depth. So it's okay to just work a lot of this in. Finding your shadows never hurt nobody. Well, it might hurt somebody, but it's not going to hurt you today. All right, take this shadow all the way down here. Interesting other place that this shadow belongs. Definitely along this shoreline here. There's a little strip of this super dark value. You can come along. Right along here, this is a ridge of rocks that we're talking about. And again, I like that you can see the reference photo, right? Even if it's compressed and we lost a little oranges out of it, don't worry, we're going to paint them in. Yeah, it actually, I mean, it's like there's the, the edge of the greens are just lost. The edge of the, the, the oranges are lost. It's just, you know, you're not, it's not quite as bright That's there. okay, I have them. I know where they is. <laughs> I got everybody. You're good. You're good, you're good, you're good. All right, so I've got this here. This kind of here. Now, I need to put a little dark value here. And I like finding those edges, those, those spaces. See how I can warm up the shadow with a little bit of red? Yep. Keep it in shadow, but it's red. It's kind of a cool thing. Add some of this right here while I'm thinking about it. 
just working these in. I'm going to rinse out my brush. You thinking? I'm thinking. Because you paused. Well, I think I'm going to block this all in and then do some of the blocked reflection and then come back with some of the sharp reflections. Okay, so talk us through what you're going to do there. So, right, I'm still blocking in. Okay. I'm still going to block in my values. Now I'm going to take my Docs purple and my phthalo green, and you can add a little burnt umber to it if you like. And I'm going to take this whole mountain and make this very dark, cool color. It is a little different than the shadows around it. See? Because it's cool. Gotcha. It hangs out on in the, all the risky clubs. <laughs> it's so cool, this color. But the reason is, is because under the pines, everything is actually a cooler, cooler color. Gotcha. Just coming along here. Pull this in. And you can even, interestingly enough, take up a little of this coolest color right here. See how I'm deepening that? Yeah. And I'm going to take a little bit of this cool color and even pull it right here. I'm just pulling across. Grades of shadow, right? Now, if you're looking I'm for bringing this down a little bit. It's just, we're going to be coming back with a palette knife. This is just super nice to have in. Now, if you're looking for a copy of the reference image, you can find that in, in the links in the description below. They're mm -hmm. on our website, and you can find them there. Uh, the, there was another question that had just come up here that was going to ask. Oh, yes, Sherpa. Yes. Uh, would you please explain what the difference between warm and cool shadows are? Okay. So, if I use everything, um, can I have a color wheel from my desk? Uh, yep. All right. So, there's this thing called the color wheel. And it's a way that artists try to talk about color. Um, and actually, color is in a linear line, but we like it better when it's on a wheel because, again, it's easier for us to phantom because color kind of travels around. It should be just back there. So, colors on the right half of the wheel, green, blue, purple, are considered cool. To the eye... They push back in the canvas. You got me the kids one? <laughs> it's okay. Okay, so see this here? Everything, like, in the violet, blues, and greens, right? Those yep. are cool. If they're red and orange and yellow, those are warm, right? If a color is closer, so if a green is closer to the blue, it's a cool green. If it's closer to the yellow, it's a warm green. All primaries have a warm and cool aspect. So even when you're mixing a shadow, when you're mixing a brand, it doesn't matter what you're mixing, it has a warm or cool nature. Why don't you point to that on the on the overhead cam there so they can see okay. what you're talking about. All right, so a shadow then with a green and a violet is cooler than a shadow with a red and a blue. And I might be able to demo it um, or uh, a red and a violet. Here we go. So I've got this here. Let's pull a little zinc so we can see it. See how, see how warm oh, yeah, that it's is? It's a warm shadow. It's a warm shadow. Gotcha. But if I were to do... Cool shadow. Gotcha. It is my arsenal of tricks. Now it's in your arsenal of tricks. Because things should be. Right? Yes. Okay. Let's take a little of our cat orange and a little of our burnt sienna. And we're going to mix them together. And we're going to get this sort of very warm orange tone, aren't we? Isn't that nice? You might get a little you, yellow ochre in that. You'll have to scoot that. that back up there because it's... Oh, down. Okay, I thought it I was going keeps, There you go. Oh, perfect. <laughs> okay. So orange, burnt sienna, yellow ochre. Yeah. And I'm going to just pull in a little in this range. And I think I can go even uh, a little more burnt umber because I want to come back over it with a highlight. So you just put some burnt umber in it. Just a little, 
a little richer. Yeah. Pull that down. Bring that down the hill. Does some here. And come along this top here. I'm just filling in some spaces with this color. Now, how do you decide when you're using a warm shadow versus a cool shadow? My warm shadows are more in light and my cool shadows are more in shadow. Hmm. That's interesting. It's just really all it is, is if the deepest, darkest, you know, play the deepest, darkest game. In the darkest, darkest night. So, cooler, cooler, cooler. But the shadows that are in shadow, but not completely cool, could be a warm shadow. And then there's also just how I want the color balance and value balance of my canvas. But already <laughs> you guys should be seeing a mesa. So it's, it, you're, it, so it's interesting that, that you're saying objects that are, shadow, that, that are shaded on the light side are warmer. Are warmer and, image, and things that are shaded on the dark side are, are cooler. cooler. Okay, because it's mm -hmm. it. It's why somebody can put a light blue back here and have it still feel like a shadow. Because that's it, how they do that magic. <laughs> right. That's how they're so witchy. All right. So I'm gonna come along here. This is gonna be a little bit brighter. You know, I'm gonna take this up my. See, I'm swinging this up this. Yeah. So I knocked that little shadow back a bit. Because again, when I come back with my palette knife, a lot of this is gonna come in, because I'm gonna be playing soft edges and hard edges in the desert. Soft edges and hard edges in the desert. Okay, so now I'm going to come down here. As I'm coming down here, I feel like... I'm going to bring some of this across here. There we go. I can pull here, but there's still some shadow. So, there. We're just making sure we've got a nice hill that's lit up. i got a nice dark hill. i got another lit up hill. Can you guys see the mesa starting to become a mesa? Mesa! Maybe Mesa, maybe not. So as I'm coming down, I'm going to get a little more of my yellow ochre, right, into this mix. It's still quite warm. And let's, you know, you can add a little zinc to your white here to, to rain. Let's just bring this nice warm beach down here. Beachy, beachy, beach. There we go. Just painting this in. I'm just offloading my brush at this point. Not fun? Maybe it isn't. It's fun for me. There we go. Just painting, painting, painting. Now, in an area here where I know I've got kind of a weird blended shadow, I can go with my brush still dirty right back into my red and purple and make sure, look at how I'm managing to blend that, that this hill comes down sloped. See? Yeah. That red, I just went right back into my red and purple. Right back into the red and purple through there. To help create some value coming down the hill. This would be really fun, uh, even if hot, to do live out there in the landscape. I'm going to add some, interestingly, I'm going to add some Indian yellow. I've still got the red and purple on here, which means they're going to gray. Look at what they do. They gray my color. So it's not garish. I don't need a garish color. Yeah. I'm going to add a little titanium white to the mix as I'm coming out over the tip. I just want to know. And it wasn't a lot, right? Mm. And notice that I'm just wiggling the brush back and forth. This scruffly little brush and this motion is creating what? Soft edges. Which I want. A little white, a little Indian yellow. Come along here. A 
Let's add some of that right here over the top of this. We're going to have to come back with a knife and see if I can't get a nice craggy little rock going. Now here's some craziness we're going to be participating in. We're going to be doing some green and orange. And this is where cat orange is your buddy. I don't even know what to tell you to do if you're not doing cat orange. <laughs> Mix your cat, yellow, uh, cat red light with your cat yellow. And then make a bunch of cat orange and then mix that into your yellow green. And I'm going to come here. Isn't that interesting? This is going to be the basis of these trees here. And you're just scrambling that in. Scumbling and scrambling. What are you doing? I'm scumbling. Why? I'm scrambling. Right here. It's going to be this bush here, but I just need that deep value. If you remember what we did with the Pueblo the other day when we painted the Pueblo, we had these deep sh shadows in the plants, didn't we? Yeah. I'm going to get a little of my cad yellow on here. Just lightening it up with my cad yellow, not with white. This is fun, fun, fun. Using a brush and a palette knife lets you create a nearly magical combination of soft and hard edges, right, that will help you create a really emotionally dynamic piece. I haven't really switched brushes a lot, have I? No, I have not. I'll put some of this yellow here in the center. I'm layering it. See, and look, I'm wiggling. You can see me wiggle, 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 wiggle. And I'm just going around. I'm just laying this paint down. I'm creating an architecture to work under. Soft edges versus hard edges to work under. See, soft and hard. Now, now right in here, I'm going to get a little of my purple, which we know is the complement of yellow, so what's it going to do? It's going to gray out. Now, if you were using CAD hue, that would be okay? Yeah. They're even trying to come up with some cad hues that they're saying are as good as the pure cadmiums, and I wish them luck with that. Because that would be awesome. So I'm just creating a little shadow value here. See, I'm creating almost like that sense of there's some forward bushes and there's some back bushes, aren't I? Yes. And it's interesting because yellow and purple are complements. So when they're, when they're put into each other, it creates a landscaping. All right. <sighs> it's looking good. It is starting to look good. We're going to do some cool stuff here. You're going to inverse block? We're going to do a little reversing. We're going to start a little reversing so that the architecture for our reversing is there before we get too far along into our space. What color did we have in our trees, our basis of our trees? It was our purple and our thalo green, wasn't it? I don't know. So I'm going to come under my landscaping here. This is a great time to do this. And I'm going to pull up. I'm drying off the extra water, see? Pulling up. Following in my traceable pattern. Pulling up. Purple. Green. It's a good time to do it. And you can take this deep into your shore edge so that you can come back and make a sharp shore edge 
as you need to. Right? Little green, little blue. See, pulling it, pulling it up. And the trick is, is you're going to want to pull these a little bit forward. They're blurred, aren't they? Yep. And then, I'm just, you just pay attention to your reflection, right? So I know I've got to go like this. If you're having trouble with that blend, you can glaze. See how that improved my brush's action? Mm hmm Important. You don't need to get perfection with this stuff. You just need to get this general sense of what you've got going. In fact, if you make your reflection overly perfect, you're sort of in for a penny, in for a pound of doing a perfect mirror. But if you allow it to blend and do what is expected of the water, when you do eventually bring some more glaze, see, it just softens those edges. And that's what we want. In the water, you want a soft edge. Soft. All right. Now I know how I made, I got my cad orange and my burnt umber and a little of my burnt sienna together. Let's make sure that we've, and make sure you've got some glaze on there. Just the start of something. Right? Just the start. Right here. Go ahead and pull some of this down. And the glaze is just real helpful. I'm going to add some of this through here. There'll be layers. But it's about this transparent, watery reflection that you're trying to get, right? So one thing to think, if there's a shadow here, and you were to flip it over, where would the shadow have to land? A little of my cad orange, a little of my cad green, some cad yellow. Just make sure that I've got this lighter reflection starting to pull through here. Glaze it if you need it. See how I'm pulling some longer and some shorter? Coming like diminished here, and I'm pulling. You know, maybe get a little more yellow into it. As you're coming here, you can have a lot more yellow in it. Are we okay? You're so quiet. Oh yeah, I'm actually. It was we had uh, there's a whole bunch of little technical questions that were going on that were like, you know, where are things located on the website? Can we get links to different things? What you know. Uh, so I've just been busily over here trying to, to answer all those link and chat all that stuff in there. So is everybody seeing how softly I'm blending these reflections in this water? Oh yeah. You know I'm using my glaze and I'm keeping this a soft blend. And just so you know, we've had just under 400 people here hanging out with us this entire time. So I wanted to just say thank you to all you guys. Uh, it's been really awesome, and, and I have been a little quiet. I'm just taking care of uh, some technical back end stuff as we're technical as we're doing stuff. Back end stuff, Mr. You know, Cooney. Button pushing. Button pushing. That stuff I do. That stuff you do. So I'm just pulling this here, like along here, and this is again just the beginning. This is starting that story. What's critical is that if I went to the side, it would throw my whole reflection off. So just make sure your reflections are all soft and and vertical right soft and vertical so 
soft and vertical. I gotta come back and put a dark reflection here, but I can keep working on that later. Let's go back into the orange color. I haven't even rinsed my brush, man. I'm just like going like this. Blaze it. So I'm just trying to create this soft diffuse line. Where it's glazed. I will come back with deeper values, right? I will be adding those. It's just really going to help to have this be soft. And this is a great time to practice those skills. I'm going to rinse this out a little bit. Like you do. I'm going to do some of my more, a little more of my cool shadow. I'm going to come right here. And these will, if tapers in, it'll mirror. See how it is? A little more purple. Right along that edge. It doesn't mean we won't have to come back with the highlight. It doesn't mean we won't have to come back with I just grab some yellow ochre and I'm just sort of smoothing that line but also blending it, see? Just real quick. Like you do. Now I'm going to add a little more of my shadow color down there, which is my cad red and my docks purple. How are we doing? Really good. Let me turn my mic back on there. So I had to head it off because I was busy typing away. But it's going really, really good. Are we kind of seeing this? It must feel so crazy to do these reflections. Trust your chalk lines. Yeah, the chalk lines are really helpful. They really, really help that experience. Pulling that down. You know, you can come here and add a couple of these pulled down shadows, right? It's so much more important that they be vertical. If you need to come across, it's an interesting thing you can do, you can sometimes go across a water shadow as well to help it if it's just feeling, oh, I just can't get it or I'm feeling super frustrated with it. All right, that's too red. <laughs> Just more in the purple. Just making sure that these are soft. Get the glaze where you need it to keep it soft. Keep it soft, keep it safe, but do keep it soft. Just pulling through there. See? There we go. What do you think of that? You're reflecting. You've got your nice shadows. It's just coming right together. It does, man. It's just crazy how it does. All right. So we can let that, you know, rest for a second. When you flip it back around, you should be able to check it and see a bit of a reflection in your water. Mm-hmm. It's a good time if you need to go over it with just your glaze to soften it to blend. See how I'm doing? Oh, let me get that there. Where the paint's still wet, I'm just blending. See? Look at the blend. Just a trick. It's just a good time. If you've got it, you've got the glaze, it's just an extra step to make it more awesome. See? I've softened the line there. Soft and hard lines. Soft and hard lines are what I'm playing with. Now I'm going to be a little bit playful and I'm going to get out my palette knife like a crazy person. Okay. This is a nice little diamond head palette knife. 
You can use the edge of your brush if you don't have one. And by the way, they come in inexpensive, like, plastic. Mm -hmm. So they exist out there for you. Don't be worried. I'm going to pull out a little of my burnt umber and a little of my cad red. Maybe add a smidge of my purple to it to all tie it together. And now along, let me flip my reference over. I'm going to be all confused. <laughs> Starting to come back here, tap a little of that on your mesa. I'm going to load up another little bead. And I'm going to come here and tap just from the edge here. See, I'm pulling it back. These are hard edges. The way a palette knife drops paint is a hard edge. And come here, make sure my shadow is thought about. Can even add some of this. You like that? Can yeah. you guys see that? Yeah. So this is one of those things you'll see a lot of um, painters that do a lot of these types of landscapes really work these tools because they're super useful. If you take out your shadow too much, it's no problem because you can put it right back in. Right? I'm going to come along here and make sure I've just got some pulling that down. If you need to get right into your purple, right, with a little red. And I like to lie, what I like to do is I like to load to the side of the knife that is the opposite of the direction I'm scraping to. So if I'm scraping to the right, I like to load to the left side of the knife. And I want my shadow to be even darker than that, so you can better guess that I'm going to get some blue, right? Hmm. Cool it. I would not have thought that, but... Cool that shadow down. Let's cool that shadow down. There we go. Now, if you don't have a, a palette knife, you could use a sharp number, what, bright brush? Bright you know, I'm going to show you what it looks like with a bright brush. And then, you know, if you use a brush... I'll load it. It does that. It's going to give you a brush stroke. Ah. But you could do that if you didn't have a palette knife. You could do that. You just do all of this. I would recommend a palette knife. But if you would like to brush it in, you can brush it in. Gotcha. I'll show you the difference between all brushed and knifed at the end. If you'd like. So see how nice that is? Yeah. Now while I'm here, I can get a little of my oxide. And I'm mixing just this light color, so I put a little of my uh, yellow ochre just right on what's there. Let's come here. I'm going to tap between these two. A highlight. See that? Isn't that gorgeous? Because I just needed it there and I didn't want to lose it. Soften it. See how I smudge around and I soften it? It's really fun. So let's come back with that dark... Let's make sure that this is in there dark, dark shadow, dark, dark shadow in the dark, dark shadow. There we go. All right, here we go. So how I work, I like to push along and I just push my paint, see? And it catches the top of the canvas. I really enjoy that. Get a little of my purple, a little of my blue. Back to that original brown color I made, but I'm getting this deep, deep shadow. I'm going to load it 
to the left hand side. Come here. And then even stronger right here. Putting that in where I feel like it needs to be. It's another little one right here. Coming right up. See it came over. So a lot of these rocks are in shadows. I'm going to wipe my brush, my knife off with my towel. I'm going to take a little of my cad orange Oop, out. You and push that little, back up a little bit more. I'm going to take a little of my cad orange out and a little of my yellow ochre. I can grab my shadow color and knock it back a bit. Pull some zinc in there. I'm just pulling a little lightness here. There we go with my yellow ochre. Just pulled a bit over. See, I'm just pulling beads. Come here. In the front of your mesa, and that. Amber says, she says, oh my gosh, I'm doing it. I totally feel like I'm a painting warrior right now. I love you, Amber. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations. So we're pulling this nice little sand color. Let's pull some across here. Again, if I'm loading on the right side, I'm stroking to the left. I can load on the tip. I can get a little white if I need to lighten it up at all. We'll pull down like that. Isn't that nice and rocky? Let's have a look. Starting to be it's, really spectacular. It's looking really good. It just takes it a minute to find itself. Pull a little reflection right here. Just a smidge. And then definitely, definitely in the front of this. A little right there. And I'm going to get a little more yellow and orange into that. So I just took a little more oxide. You can get your Indian yellow, just however you want to lighten it. Now on the back side here. See? Yeah. yeah. Switch to the edge, go to the edge. If you can go along the tip, go along the tip. There we go. Starting to get there. Yeah. Starting to feel it. All right. Now, I'm going to pull out a little of my Indian yellow and a little of my titanium white. This is a very. Don't do that. Look how warm that is. Get that loaded up. See the bead? Yep. Tap a little bit there and. You're just sprinkling some light on there. Just sprinkling some light in a couple of spots that you might expect to see some. See how that is looking at a distance? A little too light. Ooh, that's interesting. Scrape it back. Just scrape some some. See? Yeah. It just gets away from you. Just blend. Like, no. Nope. Oh, that's just blended. Interestingly. I'm gonna put my orange a little bit back into that so it's not so intense. Tap tap tap. Hey, 
And Nikita would like me to let you know that she is definitely digging on your hat. Oh, thank you. A little, a little highlight right here. In this front edge, right? In this front edge. Just tapping this down on these little edges here, just tapping it down. And then I press my little knife through. This, I think, knives are an incredible tool and I think also just a little bit terrifying at the same time for everybody. And that's okay. I'm going to get a little more of that previous color head mixed in and make sure that I've got some highlights coming through here down this hill. How is that feeling? I right. like that. I like how it how how it makes it look very rocky. Let's flip it. Uh, it's very rocky as I should It should look rocky. Hard edges and soft edges. It's very rocky. Hard edges and soft edges. Now I'm gonna come back here, back into my brush land. Right? And I have some colors now I have to think about. I've got this highlight color. Let's get that glaze on there. And add just a smidge into the water. Right here. See how we have that? Just a smidge into my water. Another thing I'm going to add into my water is my deepest, deepest purple. The, the deepest of the diox? The deepest of the deep. And I'm going to pull that back in. See? Because it would be. it would be. You just want it to be soft. I'm on the edge of my brush feathering. It really looks very nice. Very, right? very soft and reflected. You can pick up some of that mid-tone color. And which brush are you using again there? This is my number four Cambridge. Look at this. I'm pulling this down. Okay. That mid-tone highlight I mixed. <laughs> You're just pulling some of these colors where they would be, right? Yeah. You know, some of that brown and that burnt. Let's flip it over and see how it's doing. Is it softly reflected? Yeah, that's I think what we're so. asking. Is it softly reflected? Because if that's what it is, these two things will play against each other and create a huge amount of pow. They do. Now I'm going to come back with my brush. I'm going to soften some of this. See? Some. Not all. Some. That's another thing people forget. Just because you do a knife doesn't mean you're like suddenly forbidden to ever come back with the brush. and soften your mesa, right? Are you allowed to soften your mesa? Of course you're allowed to soften your mesa. It's your mesa. You want more cat orange? You come back with some more cat orange. You can do both. All right, while this is all having a little moment, I'm gonna flip it back over. I'm going to add some trees to my life. And at this stage, I have to decide if I want to add trees palette knife or if I want to add trees brush. And I think I'm going to add them number four brush. 
So interestingly enough, my tree color, first I'm gonna take a touch of my cad orange over to my phthalo green. And I'm gonna start tapping down my tree value. See this? Not dark enough. So I put a little more thalo blue out. I'm gonna need to go back with some shadow, which I'm sure I will. Now this is the part where things tend to come together pretty quick, huh? It does. This is probably gonna come together fairly quick and hopefully everybody's pretty happy with what they have so yeah, far. Yeah, there are a lot of people very excited about how this is coming together here. So we're just tapping this down. I may come back and work this again on my palette knife in a second. More palette knife free. It depends on like how it looks big. Like as I back away from it, like I don't feel like I'm totally perfectly there yet. So I may just feel like I've got to come back. I've got my burnt umber and my phthalo green. And look, I'm just pulling this down. See, I'm just tapping these just uneven. This is just pulling it down. The thing I'm fighting is slightly transparent paint and drying paint. I'm going to want to make sure that I've got nice... Sh look how crazy this ledge is, right? right? I don't want totally solid edges. I'm just pull it down. See, I'm just pulling it down. Now I will be pulling shadows and all kinds of things here. I'll put some of this here, like you do, right? Some basis of green there. Also, the center of all this needs some green. Maybe a little burnt sienna in phthalo. And some of this. Soft and hard together. Soft and hard together. Okay, there. So I'm right there, doesn't it? Just a little bit. Let's look at that. Soft and hard. Very nice. We're m we need something right here. What do you need? I don't know yet. You, but you're going to work I'm it out. I'm going to work you're it out. You're going to figure though. it out. I'm going to figure it out. I'm going to pull out some of my um, burnt umber and my cat orange. Maybe. Maybe? Maybe. Cad yellow in the mix. Just feeling my mesas. I like the mesas. How they're coming together. Just tap like that in. Tapping. I just need some values there. Just see, it's not a lot though. Yeah, just a little there. And that's where it's hard between you and me is because, like, I'm making sure that it's not a lot. Right. Right. If I've got a if I've got a shadow, right, and I'm coming back with a bit of one because I can, I'm still working out what I want here. So I want it to come forward. I can tap it out a bit. Still find my my sense of things. Just working it. I just want to make sure I've got a nice shadow happening through here. 
All right, so I want my shadows. Let's back up. Backing up, coming forward, backing up, coming forward. Yeah. Strong sources of light, strong sources of shadow. Yeah. Still my scruffly, scruffly brush. Now what's real fun here is I'm going to take now a little of my green over to my cat orange. These are not colors you would normally think are about to do what they're about to do, but they do it. It's the weirdest thing. I'll lighten up my tree. There you are. I have to lighten up some of my trees. A little bit of light trees right here. And I'm just tapping down. Just tapping down and lightening some trees. Maybe the top of these trees need a little bit of light. Right? Oh, we moved. A little more orange. We lost oh. the color. There it goes. Perfect. Wait, what? The palette we just moved. Okay. I'm just tapping in this highlight, right? It's the craziest, craziest thing. Just a little bit of this in here. Everything is very warm. Up here, it's warmer than any other portion. There's a little bit of warmth right here. So I'm just like tap, tap, just on the edge of my brush, aren't I? Susan was saying she really appreciates you being being able to watch you work this out and talk talk this through out loud. This is really, really valuable. So I've got my orange here. Thank you, Susan. And I'm going to take that orange mixture that I had over to my green and yellow mixture. Yep. So it's my cad yellow, right? And my green mixed back into the green and orange. Let's tap some more highlights into these trees. See? And it's like, see I like a little scoop? Soft, blended little scoops, and I've got to have some shadow, or what will happen? If I don't have any shadow, I won't have no tree. So even though this is a little bit loose, this is a little bit soft, is super important for the purposes of me eventually ending up with trees, that I have some deep values. I'll still probably have to go back with some deep values through here. Now here it's much lighter. I'm just going to very softly add some lightness here and there. See? Mm -hmm. Let's add a little lightness. In this combo of these brushes are making soft edges, the palette knife is making hard edges, Leaving that pretty dark. Definitely want to top some of this. Just a little bit. Now, I'll rinse out. I bet you can guess. I'm going to go back with a little with my phthalo green and my docks purple. I'm going to resolve some deep tree shadows. Along here, along this tree edge. Going that along. There's some deep, cool shadow. Maybe pull a little bit down there. See how that starts to become a natural mountainside? Yeah. Some deep tree shadows back into these bright greens. A little bit right here. Now that I've got this where I know where it is, guess what I can take? Some of those colors that I mixed, some of my green and orange, a little glazing medium, and I can come here and start to reflect some of that color into the reflection. See that? See how we're doing? 
-hmm. And I'm just pulling it down. I don't have to flip anymore because I have enough information to be able to say, hey, this is what's happening. Right here. And go into my yellow a little bit like I did before. My brush still dirty. See? We're reflecting right there, reflecting that bush. How is that looking? Really awesome. So we're just telling that story. And I can get right into my dots, purple, cad red. Tammy thinks this is turning out to be just perfect. Thank you so much. I'm pulling a deep shadow now, aren't I? Along the shoreline. Patricia has been loving the Southwest ser the Southwest uh, week. And she was like, maybe a Frida Kahlo week would be good too. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it would be just like the, the, you know, there's some women who painted who were kind of the bomb. Yeah. Um, sometimes I think, you know, it's all the painters count for sure. I'm going to get a little of my docks and a little of my phthalo blue with my cad red. And come right here along this. See who's going. Now there's just a little bit of palette knife I'm going to do. Right? All right. But I've got to get my bushes in. So I'm going to finish this with palette knife, but I've got to get all my bushes in with a soft brush. Let's look and see how our, see how that's looking kind of nice? Oh yeah. Really coming together. Just something fun. All right, let's get some of these. These were like the thing for me. These crazy colors. Yeah. Oh, I worked for them. All right, so I'm going to get some of my yellow here, my cad yellow, into that green mixture, which is, if you remember is my orange and my green. If I get the orange over here. I'm getting some colors, right? And let's start... Very softly. See what a nice light value this is? Yeah. Coming here along this edge. See, I'm just just wiggling my brush, see? Just softly tapping and touching. Get a little more yellow on there if you need it. Softly tapping and touching. Let me get a little of my orange and my Burnt sienna. Look, just still pulling that down very softly. Bushes. Little bushes. How far away, little bushes? How you doing? They're like, I'm good. Don't forget my shadow. Oh, yeah. Let me be a crazy person and put out some docks. Purple. Because mm. you really, really need a shadow. I see it. I see it there. Right? Little thalo, a little dioxin. Brush is still dirty. That's crazy. But look at that. I'll take dark shadow. I'll take dark shadow. Right here. Do, 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 do. Oh, maybe there's some just right here, too. Oh, these little shadows are so much, aren't they? Soft little shadow friend. Happy little shadow friend. Little soft brushes wiggling back and forth. Right? Yeah. Goodness gracious. Now, I'm going to cut orange over here into my yellow and green mixture. Some weird little guys right here. Talk about them. And a little friend here. Maybe a little more yellow now. Just tapping and saying, oh, I'm so happy. If you need a little white into it, bring it over. It's powerful, though, so no. No, it's powerful, powerful stuff. When you add a highlight over a shadow. Tap 
Oops, the trees. Thinking, thinking. Soft little trees, aren't they? Got a little wiggle over here. Yep. Are we seeing them yet? Let's look back. Oh, trees are happening. That's nice. I think <laughs> I think those trees were conveniently grown there to catch drones. Is that what they are? Yeah, they're. Th that's I just took a little of my yellow. The soft drone. In soft my can, I'm gonna put a nice little pop of this bright. Look at that. Oh, isn't that pretty? Right here next to the purple, cause it's very pretty. It's all the soft bushes. Soft bushes. As as it compared to all the hard rocks. Compared to all the hard rocks, this is just a fun thing that you can do. And this is a different kind of fall painting, isn't it? It is. It's falling in the desert. It's falling in the desert. Or the chaparral. And I'm going to pull a lot more yellow and a smidge of green. Look at this. For this weird little bush that took me forever to figure out how to mix his bizarre little color. <laughs> like you're the weirdest little bush. What color you even said, I'm not going to tell you. Work it out. Yep. I love that there. They were just working it out. Working out all those little colors. You can put a little of that green right there. If you need a little more green in there, because sometimes it has a little more. Like there's a little pop of bright green, isn't there? See those little pops of bright green? Those are crazy, but they're in there. Little hints of them. Having a little moment peeking. A little peek here. There. So we're just playing with the peaks of color that we see. Playing with all of that. Guess what we get to do? Mm. Put some of this down here. So take those colors that you've been so happily mixing, right? And you're going to start. Janet says this makes her want to do all the monument rocks with your awesomeness. Oh, I, you know, I hope some of you guys, I really do. You're scooting I hope off the some of you guys are, huh? You're scooting off the canvas there just a little bit. Okay. There you go. Perfect. You know what it is? I think I naturally pull my palette to me. Yeah, I'll put some double stick tape on the bottom, maybe. Yeah, stick I'm just it. pulling some of these brighter reflections down, right? Some of this yellow and green that we have going, and the green and orange that we might have going. Right? We're just pulling it down because we know what's happened here. See, but see how we're keeping it soft? Mm -hmm. Keep it soft. Keep it all pretty darn soft. There we go. Little spot of that. Now th this is the. Tomorrow we're, we're tomorrow is not Southwest. Tomorrow, this is the end of Southwest. We this finished with the hardest painting in the, the universe. The hardest painting. This is the last of our Southwest series. The next one will be the 13 days of Halloween. Next big big paint push. I'm gonna get a little purple to knock my yellow back. Too much purple. Ooh, it purpled it. Too much touch. This is, stuff is powerful. I'm gonna move over here. See how we move it? Ah, yeah. Get a little yellow. Move over there. Just, put, just trying to put a little highlights here, right? With the zinc, a little highlight, zinc, zinky highlights. Just a bit. But just now to hold us over until we get to the 13 days of Halloween. Tomorrow we're doing Daenerys. Daenerys. She's gonna be a bit of a paint, but you guys asked me how I did the skin tone on the guy Tang, and I said okay. I'll show you. So we're gonna have a couple of couple of big paint days here. Couple of big paint days, and then we're gonna have a little break. <laughs> yeah. And then thirteen days of Halloween. And then thirteen days of Halloween. I mean, because you guys might be tired of painting. I don't know. I bet there was a little bunch of. <laughs> Wait, what? No. <laughs> not. I am not tired of painting. Let's. Ugh, it's not nice. That is not nice. Put some paint out. The little bit we're going to need to finish our nonsense. Mm. Right? Yes. 
So we've got our docks, we got all that, but we need some earthy colors. So let's put out a little of our burnt umber. And burnt sienna, just said that backwards. Nick, uh, and yellow ochre. Clarence is asking, is there anything wrong with using craft paints? Um, you know, craft paints don't really lend themselves to a palette type technique, so just be prepared that you've got to uh, use all brush. Yeah. You might be dry brushing wearing palette knifing. That's another way to get a hard edge, right? Yeah. Dry brush it. So if you're using a... And craft paints just are a soft body. They're is the just big soft body. They're just fluid paint. They're like the gesso I did at the beginning. So they, you won't be able to get that, that knife effect with it. No. Or more, it'd be much more challenging. Much more challenging. I'm just putting out enough colors to get some rocks done. I just want to get some rocks in here. I have to find my orange. Where did I put my orange? I know I had an orange. There it is. Hard to have orange rocks if I don't have orange. Orange in there. Yeah. Orange in it, right? Yeah. Okay. Now I need some of my... Is that... It's hard to say which one that is, so I'm going to put out some blue, too. And I may have to put out more. We'll see, because we're going to be doing hard and soft. So hopefully, what I'm about to do will hard, hard, soft, soft, and create... This is the theory. A very considered... So I'm making my cool shadow... So Amber asked if you're using uh, tracing paper as palette paper. No. This is actually paper for acrylic paint for palette paper. All right. I'm going to load to the left-hand side. And that's mostly going to be because I'm stroking right. Going to be stroking right using the tip and the edge of my brush on the shoreline. Point that up. We're coming back with a highlight, which will be key. This is nice over what I've underpainted. I can come here and make sure that's all nice and a little bit rocky. That palette keeps slipping down there. Okay. That's all right. A little hard edge here. So if you're not getting a good edge, offload and get a bead. See that bead? Mm -hmm. That's what you got to do. Tapping this bead in along the edge and then pulling that back. I'm going to wipe this off. I'm going to make some nice sand colors. So I'm going to take out a little of my ochre and a little white. All right, like we do. Smidge of the orange. Well, this is very familiar. All the Naples L yellow people went, yay, less work for me. <laughs> I'm going to get some burnt in there. I want some different values of things. All right, a little more orange to that. I've got some yellow here if I have to warm it up. So I've got some nice... Nice stuff afoot. So I'm going to take this right here. I'm going to load a bead. I'm going to tap in along here some of this deeper warm orange. I'm going to really not take out my nice soft plants. I'm going to just enjoy that. I'm loading to this side and pulling down. wipe off. I'm going to get some of my almost Naples yellow color. I'm 
I'm going to add some nice highlight right here to the edge and through my dark value. All right. Pulling some of this right here. Isn't that nice? Mm -hmm. Can we see the shore now? Oh, yeah. Now, the, the reason why you're using a palette knife is here is you like the effect that it creates. Yes. I think this combo of hard to short edges is pretty darn tough to beat. I'm going to add a little yellow to this to warm it up. Now that nice little crag. Just hard and soft edges. And remember you can do things like drag your knife through. You know, you can add little bits of darkness. You can mix up, say my Stuff is a little bit dirty and mixing up this color is a really cool color. All right, probably we'll need to get back and see how that's looking. Oh. Close. 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 Almost there. I just want to make sure my little peninsula here. Pretty well lit. We've got a nice little shadow coming down from the trees. There we go. See? Nice little shadow coming from the trees. I really think that I've gotten through the painting. Yeah. I think that looks really amazing. The only thing you need to do, only one thing left. Sign it. You gotta sign it. You gotta sign it. So I'm definitely, definitely gonna think about my overall composition, right? There, there are so many people who've really enjoyed seeing this, I and they have so. just said that they think this is a stunning, stunning painting. I and I hope it's a new idea. Sometimes what I like to show you guys is a new idea or a new way to get there. It's real easy in art, especially if you paint with one teacher a lot, is to think that there's one idea to get there. And one of the things I want to make sure is, is that you guys know that there are many ways to finish a painting. So you can see this is just soft and kind of is reminiscent of the reflections. So it doesn't completely throw off my whole painting. It's a little bigger than I would like, but for the size. I think it turned out great. <sighs> soft blended reflections, hard rock edges, soft trees. Yeah. Another way to get hard and soft in acrylic, which by the way, is harder to do in other media. Not really, it's done differently in watercolor, it's done differently in oils. This is an area where acrylic kind of like is the jam. Mm -hmm. Be good to yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you tomorrow for the mother of dragons. Bye-bye.